Guess what? <laughs> We've got Bryant coming on. Yeah. Where you at, Bryant? Bryant's wow. coming on. Hey. You hear me? What do you do, Bryant? What what kind of stuff do you work on? <laughs> I work on GitHub Copilot as well as any other GitHub uh, product in general. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, Kai is very happy with that. <laughs> All right, Kai, thanks so much, man. It's Thank always you, you always brighten up my day. I appreciate it. Thank and you, we'll you. let you go to the chat and answer all the questions. Awesome. Ha have a cool. All right, you Brian, you got, you got a talk coming up, huh? I'm going to let you share your screen. I think you got to do that. Cool. Okay. Here we go. Perfect. All right, man. I'll see you in 10 minutes. Perfect. Sounds good. Okay. So welcome. So let me time myself. Just make sure I am on time for the 10 full 10 minutes. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan. I will give a little intro of myself later and hope you can hear me clearly. Um, but the title for this session is let's build a website in 10 minutes with the GitHub Copilot. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay. Um, so let me give an intro, a very short intro. What is the GitHub Copilot? So as in short, is AI, artificial intelligence, particle completion tool that helps developers to write code faster. But it's really like pair programming. If you've ever done, ever done pair programming before, it's somebody sitting, somebody sitting next to you and watch you as, you know, they help you as you do code, type of code in your front of your computer, right? So really your assistant like sitting right next to, to you, helping you whenever that you need that help, okay? So what is needed for uh, GitHub Copilot? So you technically need the three things, just three things. First thing is, well, duh, you do need a GitHub account. And that account is a better linked with GitHub Copilot license. There are individual license and in enterprise. So if you're under enterprise and they have a Copilot seat assigned to you, well, lucky you, you got that Copilot, you can use it right away. Um, and there are right now for support IDE. IDE stands for interactive uh, interactive development editor, like your code editor. First thing is Visual Studio, that's for like C Sharp and .NET, and Visual Studio Code, which is a primary the demo I'm going to give you today. And then any of the JetBrains, like IntelliJ for Java, PyCharm, PHP Storm, they all support it, right? And then the last thing is the Vim or NeoVim. Now, Giro Code Power Chat right now is not technically officially available in the Vim Neo Vim, but you can find a community plugin out there. So you might wonder what about if I use Xcode for Apple iOS development, or maybe Eclipse if I use Java, right? So even though there is no official plugin, I know there is a community plugin out there. So you might be able to try it out. Okay. Cool. Um so a little about me. So I'm senior solution architect in GitHub. I've been GitHub about for about three years. I've been working on GitHub Actions and then working with the customer log for that. I work at any kind of product with the GitHub in general, like you know, even security and a lot of other things. But that since last year, I've been heavily involved with the you know creating and then like creating material and the resource for GitHub Copilot, and definitely did a lot of training for the enterprise customer. So this is my uh, my last day in conference in Austin, Texas. I also did some presentation with the Copilot to public before. So without further ado, let's get started. You have like about like things you know maybe seven minute ish. So hopefully you can see my screen in Visual Studio Code, and this is where we will get started. So remember what I said about like what kind of things you need to get started with the GitHub Copilot. Well, first thing is you do need a GitHub account. You log into GitHub account. So there are different ways to you log in depending on which um, ID you're using, those, those four sport ID. Um, you can see that for Visual Studio Code, I did a login. And then is other thing is you do need to install the extensions for GitHub Copilot. So it came comes out extension. Again, if you're using different ID, you might be able to find in like a marketplace or something similar. Um, for Visual Studio Code is extension. So you can see that I installed this. And then once you have to install it, you have to restart, and then you have to kind of connect to your GitHub account, you know, with the, that ID you're using. And another thing we're going to utilize is GitHub Copilot chat. This is optional, but this can be like helping you as like, you know, kind of chat GPT, stay within ID, ask question, and definitely help to, you know, help with the refactoring in code creating unit tasks, this is really going to be helpful. So those things are ready. Once you install with GitHub Copilot, 
you will see there's cute looking, I don't know if you can see or not, bottom right corner, GitHub Copilot icon. This will start like, you know, showing like a loading screen whenever it is suggesting you something, but you can also clicking this will bring up the different options, okay? Um, so if you also wanna see how the GitHub Copilot is responding in the Visual Studio Code, you can go to Terminal. And then if you click Output Window, you can see that how the GitHub Copilot, if you choose different option there, again, if you're using different IDE, you will be able to find a similar option in other places. So this is another way to check if you want to troubleshoot if a GitHub Copilot is actually talking to the proxy server, right, we have, right? So right now, let's try to, we'll, I create a simple index.html just to get started because in the other like browser, you can see that this is empty, right? Hopefully you can see my browser. This is, it will be like showing up as I start creating my web page. okay? So first thing is that GitHub Copilot will respond whenever you provide a context. That context can be file name or any kind of keywords you are typing within your file. So I'm gonna type HTML, assuming I know, I do know some HTML, and it will start suggesting as soon as you provided some context, right? So I will take that it is, and of course it's optional how, whether you wanna take it or not, right? And then if you do want to override it, you can just uh, you know type as it is. And then the way to accept that the suggestion, the shortcut is hitting the tap button, right? And I'm going to give it something like you know simple website for AI in production demo, right? And this is also part of the context if you do want to provide it. And I'm going to just uh, you know you will give it some suggestion based on what I type. And here we go. And this is, uh, I'm just hitting the tap button and that's all the things I'm doing. And then I will just do the body, complete it. Now I wonder, okay, so that's pretty good. And if you checked what I've created so far, you see this right, right now, right? And that's good enough. What if I wanted something more um, interesting, right? I mean, that's pretty simple, but is I done it in just a while, less than a minute. What if I want to some, do something more interesting? So another thing you can try is you can provide a comment Again, any kind of keyword or that can be a context. I would do something like, because I know it's a very famous for triple ball season, I guess. I don't really watch football. Um, so funny story, I graduated from, graduated from UT Austin. So it was a, I never watched a single football game, but I know there's a kind of, pop, the football is really popular. I'm gonna give, create a table like representing different triple ball team, right? And then this is a comment in HTML, but you can use any other comment and they can become the context. And you can see that the GitHub Copilot is thinking and it did generate some like suggestion there, okay? So you can accept that suggestion as it is by hitting the tab button, but I will show you another trick. So there are different way to like generate the like, you know, result. And then one way is if you're using Mac is a control and return button or if you're using the windows is like, I think is command and return button. If you hit that, it will bring up that like a syntax suggestion. So just while you see a load and you can hear, you can kind of browse through the solution that you would really like to accept. So I'm going to just go with the uh, second one, right? And it will fill out, okay, cool. So now if I go back to the website and reload it, it looks like this. Okay, so right now it looks pretty good, but I want, it's not, too super pretty, so I want to add a bootstrap. So this is where I want to maybe using the GitHub Copilot chat. Um, I'm going to bring up the GitHub Copilot chat. Can you add, can you make that table prettier using bootstrap? Okay. So it does give us some just suggestion, and I can take that it is. And then there are different ways to like, you know, and like, you know, edit. Um, I can, you know, insert it or I can, you know, create a new file. Um, but let's say I want to also, I will give you another option, which is that like I can highlight it. And this is only possible if I get a copilot chain enable. I can go to copilot and I'm going to start in line chat. Refactor the code to use a uh, bootstrap style table, okay? 
And then this is like deep view. You can decide to accept or disregard. I accept that. And of course, I do need the bootstrap, right? So which is I can go there, import bootstrap. And then that, and if I go back here, cool. And just like that, in just a few minutes, I was able to do it. And of course, you can then decide to do the JavaScript. I know we are able to 30 seconds. How are we doing on time? Do you know? Like a 30 second, one minute is enough? Because I know very close to time, right? Um, <laughs> You're all good, man. You can see that, that I was able to. OK, cool. So just one more trick. Like if I was to edit like, you know, JavaScript, and I can do like functions to uh, give a random generation of a football winner. Just to give a demonstrate, right? And you think like that. And if I want to edit this functionality there and then alert the winner, okay? So then if I do here, come back here and I create a button and it will recognize the context. So if I go back here and I think do need to uh, render, render winner, I think alert, well, there's no matter, but I think we're almost at the time, but just in just a few minutes, less than five minutes, I was able to create a website. And then this can be ways to, like, if you want to go further, how can I deploy this as a Node.js project, right? And then you'll get the idea, right? This will be like your chat GPT kind of sort of things, but more like focus on the programming itself, right? And this will be helping you get started with, you know, creating website in migrating to the Node.js product project and there it is cool so good yeah so here's my link to connect with me i live there i don't know if it's recorded or not hopefully so yeah um yeah. but pretty much uh, that's it awesome man brian this is great and i look forward to playing around with it more i wonder man i really uh <laughs> used to make jokes about how I wish chat GPT had YAML fluency. And it seems like now you all did that. Uh, yeah, there is a you can work with the YAML file markdown file. It's just, just need to trick few things, right? And then yeah. like there is a, a option where you can add, like, you know, go there. And you just need to make sure that is enabled for markdown and stuff, right? And you support all type of programming languages. Killer, killer stuff. Well, we're gonna keep moving, dude. I've got Chang coming up. Thanks, Brian. Fight.